Yeah, welcome to our two o'clock uh, show. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. The other fellow is my brother, Gene. Uh, hi, Gene Fidel. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Jay. Gene is a military justice expert and has been doing that for 45 or 50 years now, but it doesn't show yet. Uh, and he's uh, taught the subject at Yale Law School and NYU Law School, both. And uh, we want to talk about a, an event that happened last week involving a fellow named uh, Stuart uh, sh uh, Scheller, Scheller uh, who criticized the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, the Secretary of Defense, and the President um, in no uncertain terms, very, very acerbic uh, and um, very critical statements. So here on uh, the military in Hawaii, it's a perfect show for us to discuss because it involves, uh, you know, the basic structure of the military. Uh, it involves what a, a person here, a lieutenant colonel, uh, Stuart Scheller is a lieutenant, is a lieutenant colonel, um, and this uh, also involves social media, as we've never had before, and criticism, at least in my experience, as we've never had before. So, Gene, it seems to my, me that this is a very unique situation. Um, it hasn't really happened, and it, it, it violates uh, what happened and violates a number of, of the articles uh, of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Can, can you tell what happened? And can you tell us uh, what was violated? Well, in a nutshell, uh, and, and let me, I, I'm going to be a lawyer for a minute here. Uh, nothing I say should be understood, and I, I, I imagine I speak for you too, Jay, uh, as uh, convicting uh, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller of anything. Uh, I have no opinion as to whether. Um, he should be convicted of anything. Uh, uh, and I, I think in fairness to him, uh, uh, viewers of this show uh, should uh, at least come away a little better informed, but uh, drawing their own conclusions as to whether uh, he has committed some offense. I think what we can usefully do is put in front of the viewers the pertinent legal authorities. So that's just a preliminary uh, observation. Uh, in a nutshell, <clears throat> Colonel Scheller made some uh, comments uh, inspired, I, as far as I can determine, from uh, the uh, very messy endgame in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, you know, no one is happy with um, the way things have unfolded. It's, they're not done unfolding, but pretty much, you know, uh, we're, we're at an inflection point. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, many people feel that, uh, uh, let's say mistakes were made or that not all the precautions that could have been taken were taken or force protection, conventional force protection measures weren't taken or that we weren't Johnny on the spot in terms of getting proactive enough early enough to get our friends out of danger uh, under the incoming Taliban regime. Uh, it, it, Colonel Scheller uh, uh, posted on Facebook a video uh, in which he was in his uniform. He's a Lieutenant Colonel uh, on active duty in the US Marine Corps with 17 years, which is important because he's not retirement eligible. Uh, and he made comments that uh, were uh, seemed to be quite critical of basically everybody in sight, <laughs> uh, starting with the president and uh, the incumbent president and um, the chain of command as a practical matter. He wanted the Secretary of Defense and uh, General Milley, the Chief of Staff, to resign. Uh, or, or to, uh, uh, I think, admit a mistake, uh, w whether they should be out or, or not, uh, I, I don't recall, but he, he was clearly quite critical. Um, so that sets the stage. Uh, there certainly have been uh, military officers who have, let's say, gotten crosswise with either the government or the government's policies or the government's leadership. I mean, uh, to go back to the Vietnam era, there was a, an army uh, junior officer who later became a lawyer, by the way, 
um, uh, who uh, uh, marched in a uh, an anti-war demonstration in Texas carrying a sign that accused President Lyndon Baines Johnson of being a fascist, um, misspelling the word fascist, by the way. He spelled it F-A-C-I-S-T, which I suppose is pronounced fascist. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he was orthographically challenged. Uh, that's not what got him into Leavenworth. Uh, uh, it was the sign that he was carrying that got him into Leavenworth. Uh, uh, and there, there has certainly been other officers and uh, and and uh, GIs in general who have gotten out of uh, out of formation. Uh, uh, if you recall, uh, there was uh, uh, General McChrystal uh, uh, effectively got told to retire. Uh, because he or members of his staff were uh, critical of uh, the president at that time. I think that was President Obama. Uh, there, there, you know, over over the years, there there have been people who have. Uh, Would you distinguish this? I mean, he, this guy was making this lieutenant colonel was making statements about bringing the whole system down. That he wanted to bring the whole system down. Well, and he reached seventy thousand people on social media, and then when the Republicans in Congress got hold of it, they brought in millions of people on social media. So you had a good number. Of, I don't know what the you know the total percentage was in the military participating in a conversation uh, where this fellow was suggesting that uh, he and he wanted them to bring the system down. Right. One of the I don't know about bringing the system down as such, but but uh, he he certainly uh, seemed to be addressing himself to other active duty personnel uh, and uh, suggesting that they should not be supporting the um, decision making by the incumbent chain of command. That, that's, I, I think, a fair uh, nutshell version. Um, the, the question is, and uh, <laughs> uh, it's not the question, how many questions does this scenario raise? And uh, as I think you mentioned, I'm teaching currently at uh, in your, your alma mater, NYU Law School, uh, a class on military justice. And I also uh, run a blog called Global Military Justice Reform. Why don't and, we take a look at that? Let's take a look yeah, at, at that blog. It, it may be interesting for uh, viewers to see this. I, I posted on the blog uh, something, uh, the, the title is Semper Fidelis, which was not a play on our, our last names, but uh, on, on the, it's a reference to the uh, motto of the United States Marine Corps, uh, a, an armed force that uh, prides itself on obedience and, and discipline. I mean, no kidding. Uh, so uh, it's pertinent. And as, as you can see, uh, among the questions that I raised, <coughs> excuse me, uh, are uh, uh, which articles or punitive articles of the Uniform Code of Military Justice come to mind based on Colonel Scheller's uh, statements? And how would you evaluate the government's prospect for obtaining a conviction? Uh, if you were the officer's commander, how would you dispose of the charges? In other words, do you say, well, I don't, I'm not gonna send you to trial. Uh, uh, maybe I'll give you non-judicial punishment or maybe I'll just get rid of you uh, administratively. Um, what advice would you give to President Biden if you were the White House counsel? Because after all, President Biden is the commander in chief. Uh, if the case went to a court martial and you were the defense counsel, what motions would you make? And how would you gauge your chances for success? If the facts uh, that have been reported are correct and uh, Colonel Scheller pleads guilty, what sentence would you adjudge? And what odds would you give that he'll run for elective office? Uh, and then finally, I asked uh, if you were the president, the secretary of defense, the secretary of the Navy, because the Marine Corps is part of the Navy department, or the commandant of the Marine Corps, or a senator or a member of Congress, what, if anything, would you sh should you say or do about this situation? So there's really a host. You could teach an entire course uh, just based on this one, uh, this one episode. And this episode 
you know, will go down on a certain level in the, the history of American military justice. So where would you like to begin, Jay? Uh, two questions. One is, um, you know, uh, can he can he get out of this uh, on the basis of his First Amendment rights? Two is, can he get out of this on the basis that his statements as to the failure of the strategy in evacuating uh, uh, Afghanistan were true, that they were correct? Uh, well, are those valid defenses here? Yeah. Uh, as far as the First Amendment is concerned, there are a number of respects in which military personnel, although they have First Amendment rights, their First Amendment rights are not identical with what you or I or our civilian viewers uh, might, might enjoy. Uh, there are certain things you can't say in the military that you could say if you were, you know, the the uh, a randomly selected person in the Honolulu telephone directory. Um, so you know that's the that's the, the answer to your first question. It's not the same. Uh, the answer to your second question was. Oh, uh, it's uh, assuming that his complaints were true. Yeah, that this, they were valid. The, the answer is truth is not a defense. Uh, the, uh, the, the point of the exercise is not sort of a philosophical correctness or accu objective accuracy. The point is obedience and discipline and not breaking ranks, basically, uh, or doing things that would corrode the uh, the discipline of the force. In a, in a larger sense, as a matter of public policy, it seems to me both of those, um, you know, special uh, approaches uh, in military justice uh, are intended to maintain good order and discipline, intended to maintain uh, a military organization uh, that can do uh, what the country wants it to do. So um, it seems to me that uh, there's, there's a bigger policy question here as to whether Lieutenant uh, Colonel uh, uh, of his own motion uh, can, can take issue with strategies uh, that were developed at the highest levels of uh, the military and government, uh, or whether that is so inimical to you know, good order and discipline uh, that we cannot afford to have it. I guess my question really is, if you let him do this, what happens? Well, let's play it out. Uh, there are at least two possibilities. There's actually a range. There's a spectrum of uh, options here. But let's let's talk about the options. One option is to do nothing, and uh, he has submitted his uh, resignation letter, uh, uh, which means he'd forfeit his entitlement in three years' time to to be retired and to draw retirement pay and get medical benefits. Um, uh, the military doesn't have to accept his resignation letter. They could just uh, sit on it for a while uh, while he cools his heels. Uh, they, he's been uh, removed as commander of, of a unit. Uh, they could make him assistant Coca-Cola machine officer somewhere for a year or two. <laughs> um, uh, so they, they could do nothing and uh, let him go you know, sooner or later and be done with it. And we'll see, you know, where the path leads for him. Uh, or they could uh, uh, separate him administratively. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, he'd be gone. Uh, and he might, uh, some thought might be given to um, putting him out with a less than honorable discharge. Uh, that's, uh, that's pr probably a cheesy way out. He could be given non-judicial punishment, assuming that he has violated some criminal provision uh, uh, in the Uniform Code of Military Justice, the so-called punitive articles. Um, non-judicial punishment in the Marine Corps is called office hours. Uh, I've always loved that phrase. And it always brings to mind uh, the analogy uh, if, if you'll forgive me, Jay, uh, in the Royal Navy, in the Royal Navy, when an officer is uh, subjected to summary punishment, it's called an interview without coffee. I just, I just love, I just love, it's so cinematic. <clears throat> but in any event, he could be given a, 
a reprimand uh, and uh, told to get to get out. Your your resignation is accepted. He could also be given a terrible tongue lashing. Well, uh, you know, be, deterrence is given, really important here because he could be given. Wait, wait, wait. He could be given a terrible uh, performance report, uh, or assuming again that he's uh, violated one of the one or more of the provisions of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, uh, he could be uh, charged and uh, the charges could be uh, referred to a special or general court martial. Um, the general court martial is a felony court that could uh, dismiss him as an officer, which is a stigmatizing way of leaving the service. Um, and and the, the question is, whichever one of these things, ranging from nothing to a general court martial, is are you willing to and is it in the national interest uh to create a martyr uh and uh probably he has self-martyred himself in the sense of even if he did nothing i mean he'd be gone and he would be uh claiming that he was a martyr to his view of some pretty heavy duty uh public policy issues uh, so, you know, uh, letting him go at midnight one night with his final paycheck and uh, uh, not a hearty hand clasp, but, you know, basically <laughs> being thrown out uh, or allowed to leave, um, you know. Well, but it, let, me it, add, it, let me add this, though. I question, mean, that question. doesn't stop the martyrdom. No, no. Because when he goes out of the service, that, he can make himself a martyr all the more. Exactly right. So the question is, uh, what are the competing considerations? Uh, obviously, if he were charged and, uh, uh, you know, stung in some way, uh, whether non-judicially or in a general court-martial, uh, th 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 there, there would be a real prospect of martyrdom. On the other hand, uh, if you were the commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, would you consider his behavior tolerable? And if you thought it was intolerable, uh, would you say, well, I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and treat him no better than I would treat any gunnery sergeant who shot his mouth off or her mouth off? Because you can't have this. The, an armed force is not a debating society. It's not the Senate Armed Services Committee. It's... Um, you know, it's a, you're supposed to serve, give your best advice, and basically give your best advice in private. Yeah, it's like that thing came up in the in the Greenville uh, case in 2001, where uh, it was uh, the discussion of the Navy Corps of Inquiry was that um, you you do uh, want to encourage the people uh, in the control room of the submarine uh, to speak their minds but within the control room, not to the world. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and the, the uh, you know, if, if you were the trial counsel or prosecutor in such a case, you would say, well, this really is sowing the seeds of dissension. Uh, it's not simply, I'm going to be Joan of Arc. It's, I'm going to be Joan of Arc, and I want you all to follow me, Marines one and all. And if you if you look at the kinds of things that have been posted, the comments that have been posted on some of the news coverage, there are a lot of people that are saying, "Yeah, I'm I'm behind you all the way, Colonel." So, so did you get answers to the questions uh, that you listed from the blog? Well, how do how do the students feel about it? Well, uh, number one, I would never disclose the contents of a classroom conversation. That's not fair. But but beyond that, we're going to defer it till later in the semester. Uh, and I hope we do get around to it and we'll know more, you know, we'll see. But the, the interesting issue is, as a political matter, does the commandant of the, of the Marine Corps uh, put his foot down on this, do what has to be done in order to send the message that this is intolerable in the United States Marine Corps? And if so, does the president, who is, after all, the commander in chief, get to be 
the good guy and do the grand gesture and say, no, we're not going to, we're not going to pursue this. It reminds me of a case that happened under President Kennedy. There came a time when uh, uh, the, admini the Kennedy administration had I know, called up the reserves for something. And uh, some enlisted man in Massachusetts said uh, it, it, more or less publicly, uh, this is the Kennedys again. They're doing something for political reasons. It was a very hostile, very hostile comment. And uh, they, the uh, Army Reserve, I think, had started a prosecution of this guy. And the question came up at a press conference. And President Kennedy was fabulous in press conferences. And some reporter said, well, what about Private Jones on Cape Cod? You know, mouthing off about, about this call up and how it was all political. And the that this was right before Easter. Uh, and President Kennedy said that he had spoken with the Secretary of the Army about this matter. And they had concluded that in keeping with the spirit of the holiday, oh. there, there really wasn't a need to conduct a court martial. <laughs> that was, and that was that's, the end. That's brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> but you know, the, the, there are risks on both sides of it. Uh, you know, uh, taking affirmative action, uh, finding one of those various articles in the UCMJ and prosecuting at a, at a court martial or, or even uh, office hours um, is one way. Um, and of course, um, you know, that does suggest the possibility of martyrdom, whatever happens. Uh, the guy is trying to make himself a martyr by saying, I don't want the pay, I don't want the allowances, uh, just let me out of here because I'm on a protest, I'm protesting, I want everybody to protest what happened. And there was, you know, two videos where he went through that. The first one was taken down already, the second one is, is worse, uh, if, you, if you see it the way I do. Then, of course, um, if you don't do anything, this is the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps is all macho. You know, the Marine Corps not taking any action at all, that just opens it up uh, to the Marines now feeling mm, now feeling really badly that, uh, you know, the macho went away, that the, the Marine Corps isn't what it used to be. Um, and, and that the Marine, a lot of Marines would say, you know, why don't you throw the book at him? Um, so, I mean, I think this is very divisive uh, in the Marine Corps. And I think one way or the other, um, there's a fair chance he'll be martyred. And the Republican Party, uh, both uh, Representative, uh, what's her name, D Dan Crenshaw and Matt Gates have taken a position uh, and, and um, they've sent, uh, they've re retweeted this, uh, these videos um, around, around the entire country, the world. Um, they, they are trying to exacerbate the martyrdom already. So, I mean, I, you know, it's really a hard choice for the president, I think. To take and and for that matter, the uh, Secretary of Defense and, and the Joint Chiefs to find a way to achieve what President Kennedy achieved by calling on a holiday. It's this is a hard one because both sides are risky. Yeah, uh, it is interesting though. Uh, I don't believe former President uh, what's his name, Trump, Trump, uh, Trump uh, has said anything about this. But it but it is interesting because. He's the person that made the deal with the Taliban. And, and, uh, and now what you're seeing, I, I don't want to drift off into politics. That would be sort of mission creep here. But, um, you know, it, it would be awkward for President Trump to fault the incumbent president uh, over the fact that he actually did, you know, get us out of Afghanistan. Um, anybody can second guess, you know, how things were handled tactically, but in terms of the, the basic decision, um, I, I, I think uh, President, former President Trump uh, is, is stopped to complain. Mm. Well, that wouldn't stop him. Uh, I mean, it's a technical estopment, but it wouldn't necessarily <laughs> stop him. So my question to you, we only have a couple minutes left, Gene, and I, and I would like to get to this larger piece is how important is this case, this circumstance, the decisions now to be made by the Secretary of the Army, or rather the Secretary of Defense, and the Joint Chiefs, and the President, on how to deal with this fellow uh, in this in this context. Uh, we're, martyrdom has already started. Um, what do they have to do, and why do they have to do it? Um, uh, and how important is it to the Marine Corps, to morale, you know, 
through good order and discipline in the United States military. How important is it? This is, is this a, um, you know, a, 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 a turning point of some kind? It's certainly a data point. It's one of those incidents that uh, those of us who have nothing better to do than to study military justice over the long haul remember. I mean, we will we will remember this incident just as you remember various people who you know have uh, hit the third rail one way or another in their military service, whether it's General Billy Mitchell uh, or or other people who have um, become uh, famous in a in a, an unfortunate way. Let's say, uh, I I think this is a, a tremendously important thing, and here's why. Uh, the United States Marine Corps uh, is an extremely proud organization, and justifiably. It has a long history. It's, it's very conscious of that history. It has a brand. That's really, that's really the proposition. I don't, I don't use that word in a, in a casual or dismissive way. The fact is it has a brand in which it has invested an enormous amount of energy and uh, uh, resources. And lives. And lives. Uh, every American knows from the halls of Montezuma, Iwo Jima, uh, and, and so forth, Tarawa. Um, these, these are hardwired into American culture. And to permit this to pass, without official condemnation of some public nature from the front office, I think would be intolerable for the Marine Corps. I'm not in the Marine Corps, but I know people who are. And uh, certainly there are people in the Marine Corps who are, have opinions as to the way Kabul occurred and unfolded. That's okay, this is a democracy. But uh, my sense is that people who have a deep investment, whether in the officer corps or the staff NCOs, the staff non-commissioned officers, or the junior Marines, they're all bound together in love for their force, the love for the, our core. And I think that is going to play a potent role in the decision making. So my, if I were a predictor, I would say the Commandant of the Marine Corps uh, will take steps, whether it's face to face with this officer who will be frog marched in and chewed out in a way that he will never forget and the world will be aware of, or whether it's more quiet. And then the question will be, Will the president of the United States save this officer's cookies? And, you know, in terms of reputation, and my hunch is that he won't. Yeah, we can't afford not to address it. And my last question to you, permit me, my last question, it's the, it's the Charles Dickens uh, ghost of Christmas future question. What happens if we do nothing? What happens to the Marine Corps? What happens to the military? What happens to the public and international perception of our military? I think that uh, the damage would be incalculable. Uh, recruiters will feel the pain. Uh, people, uh, uh, loved ones of serving personnel will be aware of this. Uh, it will take the entire military uh, community down a notch, down a peg, in a way that uh, I don't think will serve the public interest. Thank you, Gene, Gene Fidel, an expert for decades and decades in military justice, a teacher of military justice at uh, Yale Law School and at NYU Law School, my alma mater. Thank you so much for joining us today, Gene. Thank you, Jay. Aloha.